So now I've gone through and actually generated a whole tool here with a bunch of these little kind of Z-modeled parts. So here we have our pipe that we just created, and then I've also generated quite a few other objects and just put them all in one tool. So I just have Solo on here, and I'm just going to scroll through these guys really quick, just using the up arrow. Now these guys are created based on shapes and designs from the actual Lloyd's building in London, which was created by Richard Rogers. So these are just some varying assets that I'm going to use to generate a tiling alpha. And I just have them all kind of in this one simple ZBrush tool here. So now that I have this kind of loaded in, I want to start making an alpha with these actual shapes. So since I want to create a tiling alpha, I need to first set my canvas so that it can actually be in a size that can be tiled. So I'm going to come up here to the document panel up here, and I'm going to come down here to the pro button. I'm going to turn that off, and now I'm going to change my width and my height. And in here I'm just going to type in 1024 for the width, and then 1024 for the height. Now after this is typed in, I'm just going to come over here and click Resize. Now you're going to get a little warning that's going to pop up. and This is just telling you that this is an undoable operation. So I'm just going to hit Yes to that. And now that you can see that my canvas has now been resized to that 1024 by 1024 dimensions. You'll also notice that after the resize, my tool is no longer in edit mode. And I have this kind of artifact left from the original one. So first we need to clear this off. So I'm just going to hit Control N on my canvas. And then I'm going to redraw my actual pipe again. So just clicking and dragging out. And then I'm going to come up here and activate edit mode or hit T on my keyboard. So now that I have this in edit mode, what I'm going to do is I want to come through now and start positioning this on my canvas. Now I can use the up arrows or I'll go over here to the actual subtool menu and select these different parts. And what I'm looking for is the actual consistent size on all these. So I want to see first what's my largest object. So this one's pretty large. And then I want to make sure I establish that size consistently across all those other tools. So the process we're going to use is we're going to position our model here in 3D on our canvas. And then after we have it where we want it, we're going to hold Shift and press S, which is going to snapshot that. Then this is going to allow us to hold Alt and move our model and reposition another one like so. So using this process of positioning our model in 3D on our canvas and then snapshotting that model with Shift S and then repositioning it again is going to allow us to start creating this kind of alpha texture. So right now every time we do this snapshot process we're actually turning that model into 2.5D and actually baking it into the canvas. So this is going to allow us to come through and cycle through these different kind of elements here and just position them on our canvas wherever we want them. Shift S, position another one. Shift S, position another one. Shift S, position another one. And just keep coming through and manipulating our actual canvas like so. So this is a very fast process to kind of generate different variations for actual alphas. And then just come through and start generating all these kind of little different pipes here. Now if you want to be extremely precise, you can. But for the most parts, uh, you know, just coming through and kind of doing this fast like so is generally pretty easy to do. I'm going to switch to these different types of effects here and just start generating these wherever we want them to go. Now since it's still in 3D, you can actually manipulate these shapes and rotate them around as well. So you can change different styles as well. So if I want to add some areas like this to my model here. I'm able to double these up like so. You know, add some sort of parts like this where it's actually ending or connecting. And we're just making you know, interesting kind of patterns and shapes that we're then going to take and apply a surface noise on our actual model. So let's reposition these guys. And you can also scale these guys up as well. So if you want them smaller or larger, you can do that too. Now one thing you'll notice as I'm actually generating this process here is that I'm working mainly in the center of my screen. I'm not actually generating stuff over here. Because I want this to actually tile. So what I need to do is after I have these kind of generated, I'm actually going to change my actual canvas structure here and then generate some more. So right now I'm just mainly populating the middle sections of this actual canvas here. Here's a big bar thing. Come through and add this guy. Like so. Pretty good. And then we got a few left. 
We'll add some of these guys down here. We stack those guys. And one thing nice about this too is that since it is actually in 2.5D, you're still getting that depth information. So as you can see, as I'm actually snapshotting this part, it's actually going behind this actual pillar here, which is really nice to generate uh, different effects. This guy. Just modifying these up quick. And this can be as dense as you want it to be or as sparse. It's all up to you on how detailed you want to actually make this surface. So now that I have it something like this, now the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to position this somewhere here and I'm going to get out of edit mode. Now, once I'm out of edit mode, by just coming up here and clicking, I can now actually use the tilde key with this 2.5D to actually move this entire canvas here and it'll actually tile. So I'm just pressing tilde on my keyboard and then clicking and holding and dragging. As you can see now, I'm actually moving the entire canvas there. So as you can see now, I can manipulate this to another kind of aspect here. And now I can do that same process again. So I'm going to draw out my pipe shape again and then go back into edit mode by pressing T or clicking up there. And now I can start regenerating more of these pipe shapes now on my actual mesh. So this is how you're going to be able to generate that kind of tiling effect on the surface here. So I'm just come through and now fill in that gap there. And since I put all those areas I already completed in the center to the outer borders, I'm now just working on this middle part. And I can still come through now and select these different building parts, say like this guy here. And you can always scale and manipulate them to fit them a little bit better, like so. So that's going there. And then we'll run this across to here, like that. And let's just go and fix this guy. We may have to adjust the actual scale just slightly to remove any of those kind of artifacting like that. And we got these guys again. Scale these up and put them here. Like so, and then we'll connect them. Actually, leave that hole there. Connect these guys. And we'll connect these guys to this pipe. And then maybe do something, something like that. And then we'll fill this hole in with these blocks. Now, another nice thing about this process is that you can also erase the 2.5D if needed. So say I come through and I made, you know, some sort of mess. Like I put like all these little guys here and I don't want these guys here at all. Well, if I get out of edit mode, and now come over to the tool palette and select the eraser brush. I can now come back in and just change my draw size a little and now erase any of those 2.5D elements that I didn't like. Now this process is also undoable. So say I erased too much, I can undo that and bring it back. You can also affect this with alphas and other stuff. So I can come through and actually pick different alphas to do my erasing to remove any of those areas that you know I may not like or may have accidentally placed on my actual canvas. So now that you're happy with your tiling design here that we created using those individual pieces of geometry, we just need to turn this into a tiling alpha map. The process to do this is really simple. You just need to come over here to the actual alpha palette and then open up the actual transfer tab here and then just click on grab dock. Now after you click on grab dock, a new alpha will be created right up here at the top here. And this is now a tiling alpha that you can now export out to load into the actual surface noise modifier or use in other applications. So after you have it selected, just want to come up here and click export and save the actual map out. So here are some quick examples of some other alphas that were generated using this technique. So here's the tutorial alpha that we just created here.
And then here are some other ones that were created using the same process. Now, as you'll note, since we were doing this in 2.5D, the actual height information is being stored with this actual alpha map. So you can see on these alphas here, you can see I'm getting these nice kind of rounded edges. And these are gonna transfer over really nice on our actual surface noise modifier to add nice round elements to our actual buildings. So now that we have these completed, it's time to head back to our original building and start applying these alphas to the surface of our model.